To many, Terrifier will mean nothing still, but thanks to a grassroots campaign and fantastic word of mouth, the Terrifier series has found a pretty large audience. And now here I am, with my fictitious garbage bag full of thoughts, ready to give you the scoop. Let's begin. With very little budget, and a cast that really showcases what the term good enough means, we have ourselves Terrifier. A 2016 grindhouse affair that takes place on Halloween, featuring two teenage girls just trying to have it all. Tara and Don head over to a pizza parlor after a nice night on the town to get a slice of za. Don's gonna get more than a slice though when this night's over. There's gonna be spoilers in this video. This, this film came out in 2016, but I'm also gonna spoil Terrifier too. There's gonna be some thoughts, there's gonna be some opinions, and I can't state them without giving you the deets, which is, um, uh, which is short for details. As they sit down for a nice meal and attempt to act their way through the scene, in comes a clown of sorts, a uh, Mr. Mime, if you will. He's a man of few words. In fact, he doesn't talk at all. Yet, he conveys so much douchiness with just his mere expressions. It's quite impressive. After a small bout of harassment and shitting all over the walls in the bathroom, quite literally, he takes off. Soon to be followed by the gals, but he did forget to tip, and he's a stickler about that sort of thing, so he came back into the shop and, um, he paid the man what he was worth. And this is where most audiences will first be introduced to Terrifier. I believe there are some short movies, uh, skits of sort, that came out before this. I didn't watch those. I went balls deep into Terrifier and then straight into the sequel, and I have to tell you, normally I don't like movies like this. Bad acting, nonsensical decision making, not the greatest looking visuals, yet for some reason these Terrifier movies charm me with their disgustingness. I don't know if that's a word, but I'm saying it. They're gross films. Eyes get bulged out. Constantly eyes. There's constantly fingers in the eyes, and that, that's off-putting. Yet we can't look away. It's a car accident. You're, you're sad. You're curious. You have to watch. Some people like lore and backstories and characters with substance. I don't care that much about that stuff as long as the movie runs at a good clip. And this is like an hour and a half. And to use a tired expression, this movie knows exactly what it wants to be. It's a schlocky slasher horror gore fest. It's a torture porn of sorts. Although to be fair, Mr. Mime, who goes by the name of Art in the sequel, I don't think they ever call him that in the first film, I think he's nameless, uh, he does typically get the job done quickly. People just die hard by their own devices. We'll get to that in a little bit. I think what else helps these Terrifier movies, not sold on the title, not a fan of the title really, I can't remember him for the life of me, is that he's kind of a demonic creature. We, we're still a little unsure of exactly what he is or how he came to be, although the sequel definitely builds upon that lore right there. But for all intents and purposes, this clown can't die. So he can kind of do whatever the hell he wants, which means any decision the character makes is really a wrong one, no matter what. Get in your car, lock your doors, drive to the police station, it doesn't matter. Art's still gonna find you, he'll just kill all the cops. That said, these characters make really bonehead decisions. Going into dark ass warehouses where you're not even sure if your sister's around or the character you're looking for, yet having really no issues using a phone to walk in some of these nasty smelling looking places like, hey, are you there? Are you there? Oh, just a creepy clown? Oh, I'm dead now. The music's sometimes okay, sometimes feels very low budget. They definitely need to pony up for the third one. They tried the synth stuff a lot more in the second. It does work to an extent, but then at some point a woman starts singing, doing some chanting, and I'm out. Uh, you gotta ease off of that for sure. What really makes these movies stand out, besides the unbridled gore and disgusting ways he's killing people, is Art himself. Truly an unsettling character, and one that's right up there now for me in terms of Freddy Krueger, Jason, Michael Myers, Ghostface, art. We already have a cult classic. I think what is going to keep it from maybe reaching those huge highs is the fact that these movies are unapologetically disgusting. Saw managed to make it mainstream, but these go a little bit too far. Now, if the director wanted, he could definitely pull back a little or find a way to reach that mass audience. I hope he doesn't. I hope he keeps going nuts with it. Creepy clowns apparently don't have a shelf life. There's already a bunch of them out there with Pennywise being one of the more prominent ones. What makes Art so good though is he truly is a clown. He's not just in makeup and all creepy. No, he's having a good time. He likes what he's doing. He's having fun with it. 
By the end of the first film, we only have one survivor, and that's poor Victoria. Art attempted to do a Nicolas Cage face-off on her, but he never replaced the face. He just took the other one off by eating portions of it before the cops came. Just disgusting. Throughout the movie, we cut back to this interview she's doing. Face is all disfigured, it's nasty. And what you didn't know at the time was the movie was gonna lead into that scene at the end. We would come full circle on it. Very well done in the story department there. So where does this leave her in the sequel? What can you do with a second film? Well, for starters, we have new protagonists. We have the lovely Sienna and her brother Jonathan, the good dinosaur. This kid is a living, breathing brontosaurus. The neck is impressively long. He could be mistaken for a baby giraffe. Listen, I know body shaming isn't cool in 2022. This kid's an actor. He is intentionally putting himself on camera just like I am. I was told I have big ears all my life and it's a true fact. The kid has a long fucking neck. I have big ass ears. My parents called me Dumbo when I was a child and I'm still not over it. I'm still not over it. The good news for Jonathan, he's young. He'll probably grow into his neck. He'll be a tall, lovely drink of water. But for right now, it's a little unsettling. He's hunched forward. That neck is really shooting out like he's constantly going for a drink at a fountain. As for Sienna, no notes, not a single note. As the second movie progresses, we're gonna find out these are two very important characters as they have a history with this character, Art the Clown. What is that history? It's a little vague. It makes you ask some questions. But from what I could gather, their father is somehow linked to this creature. He created him through sketches in a book. Did he bring him to life? Did he become him? That's the implication I got. There was an accident, he died in a fiery wreck. He wasn't himself the last few months of his life. He was angry, he was, he was bizarre, and now he's possibly a clown. The other possibility, short for possibility, is that he conjured up the clown, the clown was haunting him and killed him, and we go from there. Now there is also other drawings in this notebook, possibly teasing future characters we're gonna see. I saw Cyclops in there, there was some other disturbing images. Only time will tell if we get that in Terrifier 3. As it stands, the father also made his daughter into a superhero of sorts, and he wisely and questionably made her costume a little bit pervy. Little sus that he gave his daughter boob armor and a midriff, but I'm not complaining. Just not something I would probably go with with my daughter. I'd, I'd put her in a full body armored gear, wouldn't really go for the shapely, just more function. The budget was definitely beefed up this time. Unfortunately, the same can't be said about the acting. It's still pretty horrific. The lead actors, solid. They did a good job. Their mother in the film, however, <laughs> it's not good. In fact, all the people, all the parents, the teachers, whatever, kind of assholes. The mom's constantly flying off the handle. Jonathan! Did you just spill your cereal on the sink, Jonathan? <laughs> How dare you come in here with shoes on? I will kill you! Hey, no running in the hall, you piece of shit! Scarier than the adults, though, is Art the Clown, who's back and he's badder than ever. This time, he has a friend along for the ride. The little pale girl. I don't think she's given a name in this, but she's also a little mime girl clown. It says little pale girl on IMDb. I assume that's who they're talking about. I think she was supposed to be scary, but I honestly found her adorable. I'm like, oh my gosh, this kid's just cute as a button. She's got her little side pony. She's having black ooze diarrhea out from underneath her seat. Just a cute, charming little kid. While I did enjoy this one more than the first, mainly because the kills are even more spectacular and they're more over the top, it does go a little longer than it should. I, I cut off about 15 minutes of this movie, keep it more closer to the first film. I can give you two scenes right off the bat that they could have trimmed down on. One, when Sienna's dancing in the club. She had to have ran her hands through her hair 50 times. The other scene is when Art is making a meal out of Jonathan's foot. Like how long does it take you, dude, to cut through the bone? You got sharp teeth? Stop snacking on it, his sister's coming with the sword and you're in harm's way. Jonathan's like, yeah! The third scene is the Barney-esque playtime dream sequence that goes on way too long. Cut that crap down. I don't need to see the film student dropouts trying to work their way up the ladder. Kill him quicker. He's just using a gun anyways. Where's, where's the creativity there? And they also kind of drop the ball on some of the tension. 
In the first flick, there are many scenes where they're hiding in a closet or they're underneath something and you just don't know if they're gonna make it out. In the back of the mind, you know they're not, but there's still tension there. In the sequel, they barely do any of that. The kills are hilariously over the top though, especially one of Sienna's friends who gets half her face ripped off, she gets her arm broken, and she's still climbing around bloody. It's just ridiculous. She would have passed out from the pain alone, but this poor girl is, is walking around a shell of a person. This movie takes a hard turn into the fantasy realm too. I was not expecting that. We have a power sword. Somehow Sienna's connected to it because of her father. Something's going on with her blood and for some reason she's resurrected after she dies. I honestly couldn't make heads or tails of it and I really didn't care. This is because this movie's so completely schlocky and silly and over the top, it for once didn't really bother me that things weren't lining up. And it's because these films put themselves out there right at the onset. They cut their wrists, they show you and say, hey, this is me, man. You either accept it or you don't. These are gory slasher films. They're not going to be for a lot of people, but they're going to be for the right people that like this kind of stuff and they're going to eat it up. And they are. That's why Terrifier 2 has like 90 some percent on Rotten Tomatoes by critics and fans. Overall impressions, I enjoy the Terrifier movies. Completely understand they're not for everyone. They remind me of a ride I used to go on when I was younger at the fairgrounds. It was called the Magnetron. It spun in a circle. It was a big UFO looking machine. You would go inside, you would go up against a wall, you would go against these long pads that would go up and down as you're spinning. And the force is pushing you, and then the seats start going up. And if you were really brave, you would try to hold on to the railing at the front, which was for some reason okay with the supervisor running the ride, and you're going. My point is, a lot of people won't even go on the ride because it looks miserable. Others will try the ride because they're daredevils and not like it. And then there's the third type that not only likes it, but wants to take it up a notch so they hang on to the railing. I guess I'm that guy. At least when it comes to Terrifier. Let me know in the comments below where you're at with these films. If you saw them, if you love them, if you think they're trash. Like the video if you had a good time. Subscribe if you haven't. I post tons of movie related content each and every week. Would love to have you stick around. And with that, I say, 